Okay, so last time, right after I stopped recording, I helped another student with something. And basically they were having a problem with, like, they had spawn points and the enemies wouldn't spawn in the right spot. So I showed them how to do it where, um, I showed them two different ways how to do it. Where they could either, um, why is there another dude here? Why are there two slimes? I think I have the animation here instead. That is the slime. And what is the other thing? Um, did I drag it onto the spawn point? Yeah, the spawn point has the animation. That's not good. <laughs> it's not going to be able to change anything because it's already... Uh, right there. There we go. That should be good. Uh, yeah, so I just made spawn points and I gave them the tag checkpoint you can give them any tag whatever and I just set it up so that in our project um, I think it's better if you set it up in the game controller or make a game controller script or spawn point controller whatever script uh, that has all of them but um, I showed them how to do two different two how to do it two different ways the first way was this where you have a list of spawn points and you just grab them. You find every object that has the checkpoint tag and those are all spawn points. And then you just pick a random spawn point from there and spawn it there. That's one way you could do it. And the other way was if you have the controller that has a list of them, then you can just grab randomly from their list. And I just set it up in here, public game object spawn points. I just dragged in the list, but you could also like do this find um, spawn point equals find object with tag, which I'm going to actually do that now so I don't um, have to drag them in. Spawn points, e oh, what did I just do? I think I control seed into the other thing, weird equals an object with tag yeah yeah so that way we don't have to drag in the list every time and basically all it does is just when this thing spawns or is enabled then it moves it to one of the spawn points I am gonna use this though oh, oh it's because I, I commented it out huh yeah I am going to use this though with object pooling today, which is a way to reuse objects instead of destroying them every time you're done with them, like projectiles and stuff. Yeah, so this guy just moves to a random spawn point every time the game starts, every time he's enabled. And we're going to animate him, and um, I just did the same thing as the as our player I just dragged in all the sprites so we have a move up move down move left move right for the slime move up move down move sideways and then just attack up attack sideways or down with an idle animation too which it's probably not gonna be idle ever at least in our case it's just gonna always be going after the players so that should be fine but um yeah, I just didn't want to start the beginning with dragging in all the sprites and making the animations. So I'm just going to start here now. I'm going to make an int. I'm going to call it direction. And I'm going to make a bool. I'm going to call it attacking. And that should be all we need. So it'll just transition to one of these based on its direction. And to these based on if it's attacking or not. And then it'll transition out of these. Based on different um, circumstances. So if it attacks down and then the player moves to the side of it, it's going to start moving to the right or left, whatever. Um, these ones, I'm going to just keep these as exit, depending on what the player is. And 
out, out. Do I have a third out? Yes. I need three outs for that one. I only have, but yeah, three. This one, I need three then. Side, up, and down. Just like that. And I'm going to swap to these animations. Depending on where the player is. Yep, so that looks like it's all of the connections I need. I should have said all these earlier, but it's fine. Uh, direction is two. And attack is going to be false. So it is a vexed time, yeah. This one is going to be. Attacking is true, and direction is two. This one's going to be direction is one. This one's going to be direction is zero. Um, I'll do all these ones first. It's going to switch to the down animation. If, yeah, that one's good. I think that's all of them. So if we're moving up now, I'm going to switch to the up animation. If your direction is 1, switch to that one. These will just say direction is 2, 1, or 0. That one's done. This one's done. This one's going to say if direction is 2. Oh, it does have a time. That's the attack animation. This one's going to say direction is 2. This one's going to say direction is 0. Um, three more. Attack side to move up is if direction is two. And those two are already done, so that one's good now, I think. And we need this one next. That one's good. That one, this one does not have as good time, though. Oh, shit, never mind. Those two are good. That one's good. This one is not. Direction is zero. Direction is one. Direction is one. Attacking is true. There's one again, and that one's done. Now we just need these two. So this one just says, that one's good. Direction is zero. That one's done. These two left. So good, 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 good. And then just this one. Direction is zero. And attacking. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, so now we need the actual AI. So enemy controller, I'm just gonna make this the slime. I can make slime inherit from, from enemy controller and do more with that, but we only have one enemy that we have uh, sprites for, so it should be good. So I'm gonna set up a state machine for this one. 
feel like I've done flame machines before. Just gonna make it an enum called enemy states. I'm just gonna give a chase and an attack state. This idle we don't really have. We can give it an idle and give it like a patrol if we wanted to. But um, I don't want to set up all the different animations like sideways and move to a certain location and stop. I think I did that before, maybe, hopefully. So I'm going to make public enemy states, current state. It's going to default to chase. Switch current state. Case me states dot chase. No, this doesn't need to be in parentheses. I'm going to save the player's location. I'm going to do an await function. For these though so we can just say um, find the player and I'm going to make two functions. I'm just going to make a void chase, a void attack. And I'll just say when you're chasing, do the chase. When you're attacking, do the attack. And also gonna get a reference to my animator so I can just play an attack animation and then it'll take care of itself in there I think I'm gonna copy paste my hitbox into um, another script for the enemy instead we could just change the tag and then do it that way though huh let's try that let's try doing it in one thing public string um, target let's try that I think I tested that before. So get the animator and our attack is just gonna say anim.play. Oh, sorry, anim.set bool. I'm also gonna set like flow time between attacks. And float cools. Pools equals time between attacks. Also, um, sorry, uh, invoke this after like um, 0.2 seconds or something, 0.3 seconds, something like that. Void reset. Set attacking to false. Um, 2.2. Probably fine. I need to really experiment with triggers and see if the trigger does this on on its own. Set it to true and then on like set it to false. I think it. I think that's what it's supposed to do, but I've never messed with it before. 
Um, so I'm going to do, um, I want to aim it towards the player. So I'm going to do action player controller. This. I'm going to paste this. It says the direction is going to be, um, yeah, I think we just need this first line, I think. So no position minus player dot transform dot position. So we got direction. Oh, I also need a rigid body. We could just use vector three that move towards, but um, we want it to do physics, so we're just going to do rigid body. So we'll get our rigid body. Uh, direction. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do we have a variable called dir in here, or is it just. We're going to have a variable called dir in here. I I'm going to call it direct. So we don't get confused. Direct times um, time dot delta time times speed. I don't have a speed, do I? So I gotta set up a speed variable. I'll just go public float speed. And then um, I just move toward it. I need to give it an attack range. Save a vector to distance. Sorry, a, a float distance. My bad. Distance equals vector two dot distance. We'll just say if. Um, That if distance is less than um, attack range, then we're gonna move towards the player, else, um, if um, pools is less than or equal to zero, then we will set our current state to be. Also, because we set our state here, we have to set it here. So we exit. Um, that might be about it. So move towards the player if you're not in range. Else, do that. Damage and die. Connected to false, and this already checks for that. If HP is less than zero, then die. Yeah. Um. Think about anything else. Our distance, attack range, speed, time between attacks. I think that's it. Hopefully. Hmm. The animation, right? Duh. What's more complicated? Not really, but it's fine. If player dot transform dot position dot y this isn't gonna be a perfect AI, but it'll work. Um, transform dot position dot y. Int direction. That's why we need that direction variable. Direction equals zero. Care if it's greater than that.
one, one, and two. So we're gonna check for if it's the right of the player. to the left and we're gonna move left else if it's oops it's greater than directions two um one more thing we need is our sprite renderer Our renderer. We'll say if when we, if the player's to the right of us, we're not going to flip our sprite. If he's to the left of us, we're going to flip our sprite. Um, and then oops. We'll set integer, we'll set direction to be direction. And that should be it. Now that should be it. 126 lines. Now we gotta check like eight different things to see if it actually works. So let's see. So we have a box collider, we have a sprite render, we have uh, an animator, which is not um, drop down. There we go. We need a rigid body. 2D, 30 scale 0, I'm going to give it a linear drag of like 6, something like that. Has the enemy controller, um, put a second between its attacks. 500 speed maybe, I don't know. Attack range is going to be 2. Move the player away from both of those guys. See if it just jumps toward me all of a sudden. Well, it's in the chase state, but it says it's attacking all the time. Maybe we have to do the big if statement, yeah. Oh, I did that backwards. Hello? If it's distance is greater than attack range, then we move toward. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, my bad. Give me a second. Oh shit. Oh god, he's fast. He's a fast piece of shit. Well, it's it's moving correctly. We just need to set up its actual attack uh, box. Oh, and, and fix that. <laughs> I need to fix it to... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit. <laughs> yeah, the good slime. Um, I also need to fix my attack time, attack defense, chance to attack, um, where's my, where's my attack speed? I don't have an attack speed, do I? I say... Oh, it's in the use in the. Oh, it's for the sword. That's why. Duh. It's for the inventory for the sword. The sword has an attack time of like 0.4 seconds. I'll, I'll half it and see if it actually does something different. It's better. Let's 
Doesn't seem like he's dying though. Oh, duh. Okay, so I have to go in here and I have to change my melee hitbox to follow the enemy. That's why. Give me a second here. Sorry, figuring out food. See if it does it now. I don't have a thing on its health, do I? Okay, so it does die. Cool. I'm seeing all the... Why is this here? How is that supposed to be? Weird. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's make the slime a little bit slower, I think. Uh, 500 is a little bit too much. Let's do 300 and... 5 is the attack range. Also going to add... Um, how did I do this one? I already forget. Melee hitbox. I think I directly set the position, didn't I? Yeah, I think I... Yeah. Set it directly in that. Let's copy this then. Enemy controller. I'm just going to get a reference to it in here. Public game object melee... Oh. I can type. Cool. I'll just say looking down is going to be zero negative one. That yeah, that's good. Will be negative one. One one point twenty five f. And will be 1, 125F. This one's going to be positive. That should work. I'm just going to paste in the object and have it disable or enable and disable during um, during the animations. So I'm going to create empty. I'm just going to give it a collider. Uh, I don't think I need to change the size because it's going to go automatically. It's going to change the offset like this. So, yeah, I don't need to do that at all. So, me oh, shit. Me melee. There you go. It's going to be the player tag and it's going to have like 5, uh, uh, 10 attack. Might be too much. Um. Does, does the player have iframes? That's an important question. I don't think we have iframes yet. Public load iframe time. I'm just going to click this thing out of here so it gets um, way out of the way. Yeah, that, that works. It's massive. So is this thing, actually. Jesus. Did I get the whole thing? No, I gotta do part by part. That's kind of lame. I think you can, you can, like, put these blocks together and not show them. So it looks less like a mess. But I don't remember how to do that. I'll just go down here and I'll say if 
i frames is greater than zero i frames minus equals time delta time and when i take damage i need to find a damage function right here if i frames is less than or equal to zero i'm gonna do all this otherwise God, there you go. My friends equals iframe. My my keyboard is like not taking my inputs. Like that? Is that how the enemy one looks? About the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, we should be good. Give you cash. Um, Melee OBJ. And I just need to set up the animations for it. So, in the attack down, I'm going to just um, enable it. Please, phone. Shh. Quiet. Then attack side, I'm gonna enable it. Attack up, enable again. I don't know. Down no. Um, side no, and up no. I forget if I checked this one or this one. I might have to check this one instead if it gives me an error, but we'll see. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, it's the, it's the collider, damn it. Oh, well. It's a quick fix, at least. I think if we disable the object, it'll give us an error because we can't change the position. So we'll just enable the box collider. Disable it for the movement animations. Just checking them all. I think we're good. I'm just gonna drag in the reference right there. Hopefully it's good now. Let's see. Oh, trigger. My bad. Mm. It's not hurting the player though. I don't have a player tag, do I? That'll happen. That'll cause it. Come on. Come on, slime. You're, you're facing the wrong way, slime. Did I flip those? I flipped those. Yep, shit. Um... One... Negative one. There we go. I'm gonna make them slightly bigger because the player can kind of get away with staying on the uh, on the side of the slimes because they don't go perfectly. Oh shit! That one really very fast. Oh, I didn't say iframe time, that's why. Um, iframe time... Point three or something? That'll happen. That's why we do have iframes. Oh. It's not often enough, because it keeps on hitting, so I'll do point five seconds.
shit. Fine is too strong. Uh, let me reduce its health and and uh, damage. That'll work probably. It works. It's not great combat, but it's something at least. Uh, let's see. So, I'm going to do something else right now. I'm going to set up object pooling for this. I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to have every like 10 seconds or something an enemy's going to spawn. And if I kill an enemy, then it's going to disable it, and I can reuse the enemy instead of having to spawn another one. Public uh, a list game object enemies. So I'm going to get a base enemy to grab from. You, you pick this a list, it, a list too, if you wanted, or have different lists of enemies and just grab randomly from a random list. I'm going to do right like that for now. So. Let's see. I have a list of enemies, and I'm gonna have a function to grab from them. So I'm gonna make a public game object um, um, get enemy. So I'm gonna do a for loop. Point i equals zero. I is less than. Enemies dot count I plus plus. So I'm going through the whole list. I'm gonna check to see if it's already in the scene or not. If it's not in the oh shit. If it's not in active in the scene, you can check that by doing um, enemies sub I dot active in hierarchy. Then I can return that enemy. I can return enemies sub i. If you've done this whole loop and you don't have an enemy you can get, then you're going to spawn an enemy. That's the only time you actually want to spawn more enemies. Enemy equals instantiate. Um, so instantiate enemy at transform.position. I'll just go out to dot identity. And then um, I'm going to add it to my list. Then I'm going to deactivate it. And I'm going to return that enemy. So we're going to loop through, and if we find an enemy that's not actively in the scene, then we're going to return that enemy. If we do find, an, if we don't find any, any enemies to use, then we're going to make a new one and add it to our list so we can keep track of it. And then when we spawn an enemy, I'm just going to make a public void um, spawn enemy. I'm going to do game object. O equals um, get enemy to O dot transform dot position equals and I'm gonna use this one from earlier a random um, spawn point so I'm gonna comment this one out use it here instead. equals a random spawn point and then I'm going to do o dot set active to true I'm going to just um, make a timer for it um, time between spawns equals 8f or something and then float cooldown so I'll say Cooldown equals time between spawns, 
and in update we'll say if um, cooldown is greater than zero up to time and if down is less than or equal to zero then we're going to spawn an enemy so then every time this thing hits zero we're going to spawn an enemy or activate an enemy i guess technically at a random position and then we start our cooldown and this just makes it so that we pool our enemies together instead of um, instantiate them every time. I'm going to set my attack way up so I can kill a bunch of them. And we should see them being reused as I'm killing them. Mm, sword. Attack is like 10. Should be good. We'll do one or two attacks per thing. I'll do. Come on, aren't you dying? I didn't set the enemy, duh. <laughs> uh, game controller. Make a prefab for the slime, and I'm gonna drag the slime into game controller. Every eight-ish seconds it shows up. I'm not doing that much damage for having a sword with 10 attack. Jesus, let me make it 25 attack so it's like an instant kill. Why is it instant killing? Weird. Strange. My character is going to die right now. Let me check this. They don't have iframes already, do they? Um, okay, I guess we're cheating then. I'm gonna do if put dot get hmm. equals um it kills everything. I'm just gonna make it kill all the enemies. So let's do hmm. Find objects of type. Find all the action enemies. Oh. Find all the action enemies. For each. Uh, action enemy controller E in N E dot die. I'm just I'm more just gonna kill him when I push X. It's fine too. X the die. Let me do this. Let me do um, in the game controller. I'll set it down to like two seconds. So we see one slime here. So we're gonna see this list going on, and then when I disable them, then they keep on being they're being reused instead of instantiated again. So if we have a lot of enemies in the same scene and we want to reuse them instead of kill them then it's better on our um, memory so that's a lot of slimes 
fucking very scary. Also, we want slimes to give EXP when they die, don't don't we? Let's do that too then right now. So we have a die function. Just do player dot add exp. And we'll do exp. We'll make that an actual thing in a second. And we'll do add money. Money. Public uh, float money and public float exp. Is money an int? Is money an int or float? It's a float, okay. We can just, it's just a rounded number. So we can edit the slime. I'm gonna delete the base slime actually. Um, exp is gonna be um, 50 or something, I don't know. Money's gonna be like 15. Let's do 30 and 30 and 15. I don't remember how much exp we need to level up. Let me check. 84, then 162, then 256. So yeah, we'll need a few times for the first one. One more thing I want to do actually is I want to be able to visualize how much EXP I need left. So I'm going to do that in the player controller. We have our UI stuff right here. Oops, just once. So I'm going to go down to the end. Wherever it updates, it's supposed to be yeah right here. There we go. Uh, exp text equal oh, dot text equals exp plus exp um, experience dot to string plus a little backslash. Plus um, exp to next dot to string. That should work. I'm just gonna duplicate my UI and drag it down a little bit, and that should be good. So canvas UI parent um, gold text. I'm gonna drag it away from that and just bring it down to negative. Fifty or something. Mm. I'll do it right there. I don't think it matters too much. I don't know what color I want it to be. Green? No. Blue? Maybe blue. I don't have my, my font on these for some reason. Forgot to do that. Not that it makes it very legible. So I'll just call this exp text. Call it gold text. And for the player, I'll just drag in the reference uh, if I can find it. Exp text right there. Zero out of 84, killed one, I have 30 experience. I'm gonna fix this so it's like a second between them. And I'm also gonna do this. Um this level. Like five spaces between them, or something like that. Try that. 
Might be a little too long now. Let's see what it looks like. Let's do like. Eighty five away. Level one with two out of eighty four experience needed. Kill three slimes on level two with sixty six out of one sixty two experience needed. So yeah, it's not going long enough, but we can just three hundred and the left that. So now it should be better. Getting some good, um, or decent money from the slimes. Level three already, and our, our level up heals us. Okay, hurt. Just what is it? Oh, that hurts us. L hurts us. Yep. Level four, and we can see with our experience system that it's kind of um. We can grind slimes for a bit, but if we, we put down the rate of at which they spawn, then it should be fine. Plus, you have to actually like hit them. I can't even swing right now, it's weird. Um, something weird's happening and I can't attack, but probably because I'm cheating the game. Oh. Divide by zero. The hell? That's weird. Let me look. Inventory says just the swords equipped. Oh, I never set the melee hitbox. The melee hitbox does the damage. That's why we didn't do damage. I don't want to bother setting the melee hitbox damage, but that's, that's fine. If we have a super strong, super strong sword, then the slimes just die instantly. Four, yeah, looks pretty well. Yeah, um, guess now let's make a build of our game, let's see if it's playable. Um, so I'm just gonna make a build of this one, just this version, and we're not on standalone, are we? We're not on. Oh, I might be fine. I was gonna say whenever I make a new build then the UI always gets messed up, like the scaling gets weird. Um, I think we set our main camera as scales with resolution though, didn't we? Uh, that's our canvas actually. Yep, so we set it to scale with resolution, so that should fix some problems. We set our reference pixel, so that's good. So to make a build, which you need to know this for um, your term project, to turn it in and to share with the class and stuff. So you're gonna go file, build settings, and I already have those, I don't want those in the build. I'm gonna just add open scene, or you can just drag in your scenes from the asset folder. And you wanna select what platform you wanna you wanna make the build for. We're just gonna do default windows. We're gonna keep all these the same. Doesn't really matter too much. I think development build just saves like the space that it takes up, but or debugs or something like that, so that's fine. I'm gonna actually put it in a different folder, so I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm just going to call it um, test project builds. What is that site again? Sound recordings? Why is that there? Weird. Click on my folder. I'm going to make another folder just for different uh, builds. I'm gonna just call it Windows, Windows build action. Select folder and then it should automatically build the game. And th this one's pretty fast, but the WebGL build is very slow. It'll take you a long time. But web builds are good because you could put them on a website. I put mine on my itch page all the time, and then people can just play it from the site there. But yeah, so once you finish the build, it should pop it up in a window like this. And if you want to upload it to a site, you want to just select all of them and just um, zip them to a folder. You need all these to actually play the game. 
And if they're in the same thing, then when you double click, it should just open it. I'm just going to default here. Yep. Oh. I think that was probably an error that showed up. It usually shows errors at the bottom here, though, so I don't know. I think it just had lag. Ignore my stupid um, clipping textures there, but... Um, and I'd recommend putting a quit button or having a thing in a game controller that says if you put if you push some button then application dot quit that just quits out of the game but um most people don't like it when you put it on escape for some reason so maybe you want to just have like a little pause menu which you can just activate a little button that just says quit game and when you click it you can just quit or just click to resume or something and, and if they don't want to quit the game but yeah um whatever works we can just always alt tab out and then quit the game if we want to but you know it works um so i'm gonna do this one see if this doesn't take forever to load development builds are good wait what much larger than release builds seems kind of backwards but it's fine so you're gonna click switch platform if you want to switch to one of those ones it might take a long time to load hopefully it doesn't but we'll see gonna let it load for a minute just get some coffee while this is happening or something and the build should be similar to the other ones what, what do you mean different, different? between web and windows builds yeah. yeah well windows lets you um just download it and play it it opens it in, in like a new window like application mm -hmm. whereas um web it lets you play in the browser so like if i go to oh shit no get out of here so if i go to my itch page and i go here so fear the dark is oh because that one was broken in freaking web build we had an experimental one uh exp experimental lighting for this one and it broke in the web build for some reason uh this one should be web playable though so you can either download the game and extract the files and then run the exe or you can just click and play the game in the browser so for ludum dare it's very important to actually have web builds because people don't want to download 50 different games so, you can just play in the browser. Oh, shit. But yeah. Put out of there. So now it loaded, and then I'm just gonna do build. I'm gonna go to a new folder in there, test project builds. I'm gonna make a new one called uh, web build action like folder let me check this real quick so I've done this before so that one was um, Ludum Dare 47 I saw you upload the Ludum Dare into the Ludum Dare website you, for Ludum Dare, you upload, um, you provide links to your t to your game. So you have to upload it to a different site to actually host it. So I do itch.io, mm -hmm. and like I have Vanishing Woods builds. So the Windows build is just I have um, yeah. So I just zip these four, send to a compressed folder. I just rename the folder that, and then for the web build, you just have to zip these three files to a folder and then upload that one so like for itch let me see so for itch let's go to the vanishing woods because that's the last one i did anyway 
So you upload your game here and give it a title. It'll default to a URL. Give it a description, stuff like that. Um, for Ludum Dare, it'll let you add tags and stuff. Like mine says Ludum Dare 47. And this is nice because you can add a URL to the actual build or the actual submission on the Ludum Dare website. And then people can just play your game on itch and then click a link to go to your submission page on Ludum Dare. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's helpful. Um, but then if you want to do um, web build, you have to do kind of project and change it from downloadable to HTML. You can still have um, your Windows builds up there if you do web. So like I just have my Windows build right here and I just uh, dragged it in the zip file and then I just selected, oh, it's only on Windows and this is the executable. And then for the web build, I clicked um, this one. This file will be played in the browser. So it has to have an index.html file to be able to play to be played in, in the browser. So you can just zip all the all the stuff together. It's gonna take another minute or so. So you can just zip all of the um, web build stuff together and then drag it in here. And it should work. And I just click embed in page and um, these are my default dimensions that I put for 1024 768 it's not super massive um, but it's big enough to be there you can see maybe a little wider might be nice but I've messed with too much more of that so I'll just keep it like that for now um, yeah and you can pick whether or not it's uh, mobile friendly automatically start playing games since they can like browser when loading post game buttons and scroll bars I don't know why you'd want scroll bars on your game but I guess if you want it then you want it but yeah these, these take forever to load but yeah hopefully that helps when you're making the build um, Windows is easy but let me let me show you the Ludum Dare page for it so like here's my page for Vanishing Woods. So it lets you edit the page however many times you want. And you can provide links. And I just added an HTML build and a Windows build and I just linked it to my itch page. So then when they click it, it just brings them all the way here. And I think during the jam, it would have a link to this page, back to this submission page. So they could play it from itch and then go to the page and then rate your game or whatever on there. So, yeah. But yeah, um, good to have controls and pictures on your on your uh, Ludum Dare page, so they know how to do it, stuff like that. But yeah. And this takes forever to load. Yeah, no problem. This takes forever to load, but you get the point. It'll load um, the same stuff as as we saw in Vanishing Woods folder. It's just gonna load. Um, oh, there we go. Like we said, it's just gonna load index HTML file, a template data, and a build. So if we want to actually upload it to itch, we just compress them and then do our build action zip. And same thing for this one. Just send them together and we'll do shit too fast. Do Windows build action. And just drag them straight in the itch and it should work. So, yep. You so can put them in. Yep, just dip them together. So when they extract, they'll have, um, they'll just have project data well they'll have all these mm -hmm. and then they just run the exe and it should run you can also edit your project settings somewhere in here to fix what um what resolution you want it to default at or if it has like an option menu at first that lets them pick like oh i want to play it in full screen or windowed or whatever um please manager quality why can't I remember where it is? 
thought it was in player, but maybe not. There we go. Um, high quality gamma resolution. There we go. Yep. So you can select uh, edit project settings player, and then you can go to whatever build you, you want to edit. And then you can go to full screen mode and you'll say whatever thing you want to set. Usually it says options though. Like you gotta have the option to select whatever. So I'm gonna do windowed. 1024 by 768, I think I said was what I did, but go in the background, standalone, capture single screen, visible background, visible window, maybe that's a good one. I'm not sure. Depends on what you if you scale it right. But yeah. That's basically it. So we have our game going. Um I did object pooling, I did interfaces, single things that I've done before. I might go over scriptable objects next time, or I might just, I know I'm going to go over, you know, just show the game that I made for Ludum Dare, or I'm making for Ludum Dare. Uh, I'm going to try to stream that tomorrow, I get off at 8 o'clock, I'll be off late, so, see how that goes, that'll be fun, but I'll, I'll link my, I'll, I'll link my, my Twitch, so people can watch if they want to, but, we'll see how that goes. Uh, that's it for the recording, I think, so let me stop that now.